Hey everybody, welcome back to GGRC, where we're trying to keep good games alive. This is RC, and today we're checking out Unbox, Newbie's Adventure. This is actually a pretty cool 3D platformer where you play as this little box character. And that's really all there is to it. There's all kinds of zany missions that you go on, and uh, you, you could jump all over the place. It's pretty crazy. This doesn't appear to be a very long game, so I don't know how long of a video we're going to be doing here today, but you can see down at the bottom right... There's only 54 stamps to collect, uh, there's only three major stamps to collect, that means that there's a major boss in each level, that must mean there's only three bosses in the game. Um, there's 200 rolls of tape in each level, which would suggest there's four actual levels in the game, so not super long, and from what I saw online, it takes about six hours to complete. At this point, I'm about, I would say, an hour and a half into it, and I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. So I'm, I'm actually playing this on Steam. Uh, but I believe that this game is available on Xbox One and PS4, and if not, it will be soon. And I know that they have confirmed that it's supposed to be coming to the Nintendo Switch at some point in the future as well. Now, one of my sticking points with this game, though, is that even though I'm having a lot of fun with it, the loading times on this game are not very good. And when you get into the actual game, you'll see that it is, I guess it is rendering quite a bit of you know stuff going on at the moment. Uh, so there, there's a lot to check out and and uh, and do in the game, and you can see it's rendering a gigantic open world, but I feel like the the loading just takes a really long time. I don't know that the game is utilized enough. You know, I I, I don't know that they've gone through and I'm sorry, the, the word I'm looking for is optimized. They haven't optimized it enough so that way it runs good. You know, on on PC and everything, because there have been times where they, I'm playing this game and my PC is just like revving up <laughs> to to process what's going on on screen, which I don't think should be happening in this sort of game. But uh, as you can see, what's uh, tell with what's going on screen here, all of the characters have you know their their own crazy little voices like they do in uh, it's it's very Banjo Kazooie ish, and they all have different personalities as well to go along with these silly voices. So you see this this freighter, this boat, is actually taking us to this tropical island. When I started playing this the other night, I immediately thought, wow, this feels like a summer game release. Like, part of it is because you are on this island, but also, like, it's summertime right now. This feels like a, a new game release that I would have gotten on the Nintendo 64 back in the day when I was, uh, you know, <laughs> just a kid in the, in the 90s. Um, but you play as this little box character here. I happen to be a pig with devil uh, wings and a tail and everything and bunny ears, but you can actually change the way you look. Now, this game gave me immediate uh, feelings for, uh, you know, Marvel Madness. It gave me nostalgia feelings for Marvel Madness, even though you're you're a box. So when you're rolling around right here, the it is a bit strange. You don't feel quite like a ball because you're, you're, you are a box. So you, you get this, like, weird thing going on where, you know, you're, you're not quite going straight, but, you, th you know, it's... You feel like you kind of are. I don't know. It's hard to explain. The physics are a bit strange because you are a rolling box. But this is the best part about it right here. This is what you'll be doing through most of the game. You could jump all over the place. And you have six chances to do that. And then now you can't do any more. That's what they call unboxing. So every time you jump like that, it's unboxing. So this is your regular jump, and now I cannot double jump anymore. But once you hit a checkpoint, that will refresh your unboxes, and you can also pick up these little health cubes that are laid around all over the place, and that will also refresh your, your unboxes. So, like, here's a health cube right here. So, let's use one. So, now we're down to five instead of the six. There we go. We just grabbed another one to bring it back up to six. But you can see, <laughs> when he unboxes, he actually loses a layer of himself right there. So, you can see the little pig box laying right there. But, like I was saying, yes, you can actually change your box, too. So maybe we'll go and do that real quick first before we jump into a whole lot of action. Pick up a health box on the way. Now there is fighting in this game while you're walking around. You got these boxes here who want to take you out. And the only way to take them out is to actually jump and butt stomp the ground. They're not really too hard to take out, but they can be a bit annoying every now and then. Here we go, here's some more health for me. 
Now, the, the weird turning of the box running on the ground takes a little bit to get used to, um, but the more you do it and the more you start jumping around or whatever, the more it starts to become uh, a, a lot more, you know, fluid. You know, you, it, it feels... Uh, Feels like it was made this way for a reason. Uh, the interesting thing is that jumping is actually on the R1 button for some odd reason. Um, and when I started the game, I was like, why is, why is jumping on R1? And then unboxing is on L1. So when you do that, that's an R1 and then an L1. So when I st first started, I was like, what is going on here? Why are we doing it this way? Um, but the, once you start playing the game, and you do more and more jumping and whatnot, it starts to make sense as to what... Uh, you, you know why they, they chose to go that route with it. it. It feels, it actually feels really cool. And I'm, I'm using the bumper most of the time to do it, but you can also use the triggers too, so... Right, right now I'm actually using the triggers. So here we are. We are now at the costume shop here, so if we go up here... You see that we have all these different options to actually change what our box looks like. I actually started with the little pumpkin jack-o'-lantern guy here. But you get all these uh, horror ones that you can do as well. And then there's plenty that I have not unlocked yet. And you do you uh, get these for doing the different challenges on the island. So there's actually a challenge on this island that I still haven't even done yet. I like the crazy face. Let's go with the crazy face. I like that. You got the hair with the goggles. Big lampshade. Little beanie. We'll go with the beanie. Even though it's summertime, it's kind of silly. Blinking red nose. And, oh man, the bow tie is almost dead, isn't it? But we got an inner tube. Maybe we'll go with the inner tube here. It's pretty funny. And it says we could change the color here. So, yeah, let's go with green. I like a good green. There we go. We have a new clowny box here, which is pretty damn hilarious. Now, your whole goal in this game is to collect stamps. You, I've already finished this level, actually. So, what you want to do is collect 10 stamps. And when you collect 10 stamps, that unlocks the boss to fight. And we actually fought at the very top of this uh, pillar in the middle. It's not really a building, it's a strange built pillar thing in the middle. And we fought this gigantic box at the top of it trying to knock him off, and it was a very interesting fight. Uh, the other thing that you're collecting besides stamps, though, is you're collecting these little gold things of tape. So there we go, we just got one. I'm not sure what they're actually going to do with it or play into it with the game, but if you pause it, you can actually see what your uh, totals are here. So you can see we've gotten the boss stamp, the gold stamp. We've gotten 10 out of the 18 main stamps that you can or uh, normal stamps that you can get. And we've gotten five out of the ten captured little boxes here. Um, we've gotten a, a little over half of the golden tape as well. Now, if you want to find more challenges, you can actually use the D-pad. You can go through different areas, or go through all the things that you've finished and the things that you haven't finished yet. So you can see that we have two characters, it looks like, to actually meet up with and do their challenges. So we got one that's like 0.45 kilometers away. How close is the other guy? So he's a little further. So we'll go with this guy here. We'll just jump right across the, the ocean here. Woo! We'll hit this checkpoint to refill our unboxes, and we will go try and find this, uh, this guy here. What was his name? Did it say? It doesn't say. But one interesting thing you definitely would not expect from this game is that all the boxes seem to have a personality, and they all have names, which is <laughs> pretty funny. Again, not something I would have expected. Uh, it says he's nearby. Here he is. We found his stand. So all of them are going to have little stands like this hidden throughout the, the lands that you get into. And let's see what this guy wants us to do. Have you ever had to do manual labor, newbie? Uh, sure. So he says, nobody knows why we're building this radio tower. So that's what this is, it's a radio tower. <laughs> Talking about aliens, regulations. And if you can go get my hard hat back, I'll give you the stamp that we dug up last week. So let's get his hard hat. I'm assuming we have to climb this thing, get his hard hat, and then we get a stamp. So that's what the missions are basically like in this. Um, there are a few missions that uh, have stamps where you don't have to do anything for anybody specific. They're just sort of around, uh, which is 
kind of nice because some of these are timed and they can be a little bit annoying to deal with at times. I haven't failed them, I don't think. I don't think I've failed one, but there was one where I was like super close to failing it and it was a bit uh, annoying because of what was involved. So I had to actually uh, help some of my box friends ex escape some of these uh, uh, really bad boxes that are all around that you're trying to defeat, right? And as I was doing that, um, they kept hitting me with rockets and trying to keep me away uh, from capturing my friends, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, freeing my friends from them being captured. But the, the annoying part of it was, was that when you grabbed a friend of yours, you put this inner tube around them, right? And when you put the inner tube around them, it completely inhibits, like, your rolling and everything. So you have to really try to get away from... Oh, nope. Gotta get away from that. Get away. There we go. Don't want to get exploded. Uh, but they, it would completely inhibit your movement. And it was very, very frustrating. So it got to the point where I think I had, like, five seconds left. And it didn't feel like it was because, you know, I had, uh, you know, any problems with doing the actual mission itself. It's because stuff just kept getting in the way. And it was just like, oh, get out of the way. <laughs> so the challenges seemed to go back and forth between being somewhat challenging and platform-based to, to just being uh, a little annoying. And to be quite honest, it might be the only annoying one that I've actually been a part of. The rest of these haven't been too bad. Here we go, we hit a checkpoint for this particular mission here. Though there was a mission where I could not get to a checkpoint when I had to actually jump over a certain area, and there were bombs all over the place, so like, I knew I had to get to a checkpoint so that way I didn't have to start over at the beginning of the mission again. So that was a little bit frustrating as well. Um, but that's I'm okay with that because basically what this game is doing is it's feeling very much like an old school platforming game. And it knows what it is. It doesn't try to be anything else other than that. And because it's a short game, you know, I, I, I just feel like it's not a big issue. Oh, man, I just got completely smushed right there. Whoa. Where do these <laughs> satellite things come from? So now you're seeing a little bit of the jankiness of the game. And that's something I haven't gotten into yet, is that with this game uh, being a smaller release and feeling like an older game, it feels like it still has some of that old-fashioned jank that you might find in an old N64 game, which, personally, I, I welcome a bit, you know? If you're gonna go and make a game old-school, you either need to totally modernize it or completely embrace, you know, the fact that it's supposed to feel like an old-school game. Like, either all or nothing, you know what I mean? Okay, we gotta wait for this thing again. Don't wanna get smushed again. There we go. Reading these jumps sometimes can be a bit of an annoyance as well. But that's part of the game. It's about learning. Getting the physics, right? Sometimes physics stuff in games can be just a bit annoying. But overall, the, the fun I'm having with this game is totally outweighing any of the frustrating stuff. When I say frustrating in this game, I, I really don't even mean that in any kind of, like, you know, really important, annoying way, you know? Oh, man, I just skipped a whole... Oh, no, I'm out of boxes. <laughs> wow. I was like, I just skipped a whole bunch of the level, and then I was like, nope. It just totally... <laughs> it totally dumped me down. I need a refill here, though, on my, my boxes. You've almost reached the top. All right, so I gotta remember when I jump across this to get away from that. There we go. That guy's got a bunch of TVs, but he's got no health for me to pick up, unfortunately. But we did get a checkpoint there. And that's the hard hat. So this is actually the area where you fight the boss. So when you were when I was fighting the boss, he actually had these drop grates right there. You can see as you roll over them, they, they go loose. Um, but you actually had to hit a switch for those to go loose when you were fighting him. So just something to keep in mind. Whoa! There we go, we got the helmet. Now what's cool is when you unlock these challenges, or when you finish them, you actually get a lot of this stuff uh, to use later. Like, you can actually wear... You'll probably actually be able to wear the hard hat later. Um, and you might actually be able to wear 
uh, that guy's face later as well, if you like his face. Now, I don't know if there's actually any falling damage in this, but I guess I'll, I'll just be safe, just in case. I would assume there can't be, right? I mean, there can't be any real falling damage in this if you're jumping across islands and stuff, right? Challenge complete! There we go. So now we get a stamp. So he says, take the stamp and get out of here, newbie. So that is your name. You are, you are called newbie, and you have been somewhat hired by all of these boxes to take care of all of these issues that you've been running into. Or that they've been running into, rather. So they just call you newbie throughout the whole thing. Who knows what your real name actually is, but I guess that might be it. Oh, another gold tape. Let's grab this. I'm guessing that must be his name, considering it's in the title of the game, so... Just embrace it. Embrace the noobness. I thought there was... Okay, so I did grab two tapes there. Alright, so we've done quite a bit in this one already. Uh, I did unlock another level. So let's go check that out real quick here before I call the video. Because I really don't want to play through a whole ton of this game just because, you know, it's a shorter game and if you guys decide to check this out later, I don't want it to be completely spoiled for you. But here we go, sitting through another loading screen. Another one of my pet peeves for this game. So here we are, the previously screen. Now, I thought we were just watching this, unless this is taking me to a new area. So this is where he's going to actually explain the whole issue going forward here. And we want to go to locations. Oh, you know what? I haven't been here yet. This is this is the hub world where you start out. Uh, you actually start a lot of your tutorials here. And I was coming back because the world that I just unlocked was actually like a snowy world. But upon coming back to the hub, it looks like the hub is actually its own world as well. That is very surprising. So let's jump in and uh, see what we can do here. So we just collect all the gold tape we can find. I don't know what the gold tape does. I haven't actually done anything with it just yet or found anything that, you know, uses it, so. Isn't being on an oil rig fun? I never thought anyone would ever say that to me. How can I help you today? Finding things. The other base is filled with secrets. What do you need help with finding? Gold tape. Let's see. Okay, so he'll just show you random areas where there's some gold tape, but... I don't know. That's not super helpful. I was really hoping that in this game, because, you know, there, there's 200 pieces of gold tape to find in every level, that there was a possibility that they might have some sort of a tracker that unlocks when you finish the game. And that, that might be the case, but if you're just sitting there with the, you know, the thought process that, like, oh, man, you know, I'm just going to ask this guy every single time where a piece of gold tape is, I don't know, that might get a, a little annoying. But again, embracing that old school, right? Old school game, that's what they would have done on an N64 game. So let's free our, one of our friends here. So we free him, and when you talk to him... He'll actually, uh... Thanks for freeing me. Do you want to hear how I make such good t cages? So in the other level, he would actually give you a tip or, or like, some explanation as to, you know, what's going on with the, the other bad boxes that are trying to keep all these guys caged, right? In this one, he's just saying, I use a wrench to build a good box. So he's just giving you tips on good box building, I guess. So th there's a lot of silly humor in this game. So if that's definitely, if, if you know, if that's in your wheelhouse, if that's your bag, you're really going to love that with this. Because um, this is like a very so somehow sillier uh, Banjo-Kazooie, if you can imagine that. Considering you're playing as a box and all the boxes talk and they all have personalities and everything, um, it's, it's really strange. Oh, there was a guy... Where was it? He's... Where's the... The arrow is pointing that way, but I didn't see... Huh. Let's go see if we can find him again. I'm actually gonna jump down here. That might... Is that him down there? We'll hit the checkpoint just for fun. Have you saved the world yet, newbie? Oh. Nope, that is not him. 
but it is pointing down like into the ship. So I wonder how we're supposed to actually get down in there. Because I am not quite sure off the top of my head. Get up there. There we go. That could be a little frustrating <laughs> trying to get through some of that silly stuff right there. Weird fencing and whatnot. So there was that guy. Okay, so he is... Alright, so he is down below deck. You can see through here that there is a way to get down into the ship. And I guess we gotta take this elevator. There we go. Alright, so this was where we originally got in to choose where we wanted to go. So you can see that that painting across the way, Paradise Isles, um, that is where we actually started the game. That was the first level we, we started in here. Let's unlock this door here. Now, I did unlock, like I said, like a frozen level, but I'm not sure where that is. Whoa! Totally exploded me. Okay. Now we gotta get back. There we go. Let's try to avoid those exploding boxes this time, huh? We'll hit this checkpoint, too. I thought I hit that. That way, if you die, you'll always respawn right there. All right. And I could have swore I grabbed this tape, but maybe I didn't. Do not touch. Yeah, that's really strange, because I finished the other level, and it automatically took me to the, the frozen level, but now the guy's telling me I need to find switches to actually open that door. So, I don't know if I do this once, and then, you know, they're, they're good to go with it. Or what, but... You do have some time switches like that, too. There's, you know, like I said when we started, there is a little bit of jank to this game, you know? Um... You're going to play this game, and you're going to find that there's little things going on where you're like, that doesn't seem quite right. And you you are more than likely correct in your observation. Um, but for me, it's one of... Oh, jeez. Almost didn't make that. But for me, it's one of those games where, like, you sort of... Because it's fun to play, you sort of embrace the jank, if that makes sense. Uh, hopefully, they'll fix a few of the little issues that are going by, especially the loading. I hope they optimize it just a little bit more... Um, and they're able to, uh, you know, make it run just a, a bit better. Because I, I don't have the best PC in the world, but I have a pretty decent one. And for it to kind of chug along uh, at certain points in this game, does, just doesn't seem right. Alright, I am still... Look, Okay, so that's Paradise Isles nearby. Okay, so that was just pointing to where the next place was to visit, it would seem. But I thought I actually had someone to talk to. Alright. Well, we're going to open this up. And head out here. And... Hit the checkpoint. And we'll get that gold tape. I actually find collecting the gold tape to be pretty fun. There's nothing... You know, even though I've gotten frustrated at a couple... You know, little things in the game or whatever. I like that they've added a something to collect that... Really f takes the pressure off, you know. Nice, good close-up of my box friend here. But yeah, I, I love games where you have, like, some little thing you can do where you're like, I can just pass the time here and collect these things, you know, and then maybe later, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll check out this, this one, you know, really tough challenge here. This is really funny. This little green square is, like, hanging out with his stuffed rabbit. Um... You can actually change the viewpoint on your box, too. I usually use this viewpoint, but you can go further out or close in, so... Maybe we'll see what it's like to be a little further out. Wow, you're the second biggest sentient cardboard box I've ever seen. That's <laughs> what that guy just decided to tell you. Which is pretty silly. Here's a switch here. What does this do? Oh, okay. So make it so we can float. And there looks to be some gold tape here. I think I collected it. Is there anything else up there? It certainly looks like there might be. Oh, we just barely made that. Gold tape. See, I do actually really like trying to find all the gold tape like that. It's a good time. 200 of them to find. Oh, and they're hiding one behind the ship here, too. I'll take that. Now, I really want to see if there's a way for me to find the switch for this room here. 
really not sure where that could be. I really thought it'd be down here somewhere. I mean, really, I figured it would be like behind this gate. But how do you how do you get in there? There's a guy to talk to in there. And there's a guy to talk to in there, it would seem. Well, let's go talk to this undead guy here. Let's go see what's going on with him. We'll head back up this. There's a gold uh, piece of gold tape out there on that buoy just hanging out in the middle of the ocean. Probably leave that one be for now. Come back to it later. There's one out there on that crane. Good to know. All right, so we will just jump right across over here. The jumping across things, like really big gaps thing, never gets old for me. I think that that is just a load of fun. Oh, there's another one. Grab that tape. There we go. Oh, and there's one on top of his building. Got it. And another gold tape over here. Oh yeah, did I mention that you can drive cars in this too? Why? <laughs> right? Oh man, I'm stuck in this like really tiny crevice over here. Did you see this? I can't move. It's stuck. That's funny. I assure you though, you can drive them around when they're not stuck. There we go. Got that gold tape. Got that gold tape. Here we go. Let's try driving this one around. Here we go. Box power. Driving it is very janky, though. I'll tell you that. It does not feel right. <laughs> there we go. You push up on the stick to accelerate, and then you just change the camera around to kind of aim where... Or to steer and aim where you're going. It's, it's pretty weird, but that's okay. Just fun silliness, really. More gold tape. All right, let's get up to where our skeletal-looking buddy could be. Oh, not quite going to make it. i got to go hit the checkpoint. i got to get some more unboxing material here. Or I guess we could probably take the elevator up, huh? I'm just so used to uh, unboxing everywhere. It's a lot more fun to do it that way. Elevator up, not as fun. Alright. So this is a different aisle, it would seem. He said I gotta get in the crate. And how do I do that? Whoa! Whoa, I got burned up. Look at my box turned black for a second there. That's pretty funny. I have to get... I'm in the helicopter. Can we just go now? I'm in the helicopter. He said I gotta get in the crate? Get in crate, and we will ship with the speed of a thousand rockets. Huh. Not really sure how I'm supposed to get in the crate. But I have not unlocked that level just yet now, so I'm not really sure. Let's go Let's go uh, say hi to this other guy over here. He is right here? Oh, okay. I think this is the guy. This guy is going to take us to the, the Cold Lands, hopefully. Are you going to Parcel Peaks? Uh, yeah, there we go. Cool. So, how do we go? Oh, there we go. Okay. So, there's the box. So, yeah, we have not unlocked that other level yet. So, that box, you, I had to j jump into the park, uh, packing peanuts, and then now we're going to ship over to the the uh, frozen level here. That hub world is huge, man, isn't it? All right, so that makes sense. So, the game, the game is going to be relatively short. You're going to have three full levels with bosses and everything, and then what you're going to have is, uh, you know, a bunch of stuff to collect in the hub world there, which would explain why there's 800 golden tape pieces to find. So let's take a few minutes, check out the frozen world, because I haven't been here yet. And uh, then I think we'll be calling it.
So this is what I saw before when I finished the, the other island. You get in the box and they ship you here. But you don't get to see that part of it. You just show up on this really nice treaded truck, so... The box population of the uh, frozen waste. <laughs> this is like the, the Alaska of box world. Parcel Peaks, that's what it's called. Anybody keeping score out there. So yeah, you know, I, I think that this game uh, has been a lot of fun so far. Um, I actually, uh, you know, I'm not sure how much this game is. Let me look that up for you guys really quick. Because I want to give you a, a verdict on whether, you know, I think it's worth the money or not. Because one of those games where if it were on sale... I could definitely recommend it because it's fun. So let's see. On Steam, Unbox Newbie's Adventure. Is $19.99, so it's a $20 game. Now, does this feel like a $20 game? Um, you know, I, I, I played other games that were short, that were $20. You look at a game that I played last uh, year called Inside, which I thought was amazing. Here we go, rolling around this uh, really cool frozen area here. You got the look at the boxes skiing and whatnot. We might have to see if we can do that. Um, but, you know, you play a game like Inside, and Inside I thought was totally worth the $20 just based on the adventure of it. Um, but a lot of people would disagree because it's like a six or seven hour game. Uh, this game... Unbox seems to be along those lines as well. It's gonna be a six or seven hour game. Um, is it worth twenty dollars? So far, from what I played, it feels like it is. You know, back in the '90s, you got a game like this that might be you know six, seven, eight hours uh, of playtime, and it was sixty bucks. Oh man, we could ride the sled. Get on the sled. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, we can't really control the sled, but that is fun. So I'd have to say that, yeah, I think that this is uh, definitely a game that's worth 20 bucks. I've been having a lot of fun so far with it, now that I'm, you know, hitting around the, the you know, two-hour mark with it. And uh, there's a lot of personality. You could tell that there was a lot of, you know, love and care that went into this game as well. And uh, they've already said on the Steam forums that they do plan to fix a lot of the issues that have gone on with it. You know, they, they plan to check out the optimization stuff. Oh man, look at this little snowman here. That's cool. Little box snowman too. But they, they plan to go through, try to try to optimize the game a bit. Um, they also plan to fix some of the other bugs that people are running into. So they're definitely in this, you know, for the long haul with this game. And um, when I find a kind of a, a, a fun game like this on Steam, and you see that it just hasn't gotten the attention it deserves, it's always sad. Um, you know, you find a game that you had like a, like a lot of fun with, and you'll see like kind of, sort of a, a dead, you know, set of discussion forums on Steam, and it's 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 a sad state of affairs because you know that someone put a lot of time and effort into uh, whatever game it is that they're playing, and uh, here we go, we got a guy nearby, so we'll probably do this one, and uh, it, it's just sad to see that you know people just aren't playing it or it gets uh, overlooked due to the overwhelming amount of games on Steam nowadays. So, if I had to say anything, I would say definitely check out Unbox if you get the chance. It's a, it's definitely a fun game. I've been having a ton of fun with it. And I, I plan on uh, playing through uh, most of it, if not all of it, maybe the rest of this weekend. Okay, let's check out this uh, particular mission here. And then we'll call it here. So, we got Mope here. He definitely looks mopey, that's for sure. And he's got a mop on his head. Mope the mop. It's flying a plane filled with cargo to Parcel Peaks when wild cards attack. So that's the name of the evil boxes in this. They're called wild cards. And hey, if you're not a fan of the talking in this, you could click right through it, which is really nice. So. Oh, 
Really kind box. So we're going to help him out. Mop up. Get to the mountain, grab the mops, and get out of there. All right, here we are on top of the mountain. So we got to get in here, and we got to locate these mops. So these mops here... Can I pick up more than one at once? It doesn't look that way. So this... this uh, Mission is actually very similar to the one that I was mentioning earlier, uh, where the they would only let me pick up one at a time, uh, and I was timed. And the, the the creatures that were rolling around, these little box guys, were just all over me, and I could not get back to the box. This doesn't seem to be as bad, especially considering it's not timed. I would take those guys out real quick. Let's try to get to all these mops. So it's it's a strange thing with the missions in this game because some of the missions are timed and they 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 feel a little bit more frantic. This one is more like you know go at your own pace just to avoid the enemies and you'll be you'll be good to go you know. Now I would assume you probably have to do all this without dying because if you die you know they're going to start you over again. Okay, two last mobs are up this way, so I guess that could get frustrating for some, but. These box characters, they're, they're so clumsy, they don't really feel like they're the hugest threat. The, the other mission that I was playing actually uh, had boxes that were, you know, they, they, they had rocket launchers, believe it or not. <laughs> so with these rocket launchers, you know, they're, they're shooting me from all over the place. And they seem to have, like, amazing accuracy with a rocket launcher, which, man, Quake 1 rocket launchers, I suppose, right? There we go, uh, challenge complete. We actually got all the mops. You saved my mops. So here we will collect another stamp, and that will be it for this uh, video here. Thanks, Mope. Thanks for the stamp. One out of 18. So that's our first for the Frozen World, but... we got Let's see, we got a hat with aviator goggles. I thought we were going to get the mop head. There it is, we got the Mope mask. I want the mop head. Do we get the mop head? Oh, it doesn't... Unless it unlocked before I saw it. I did not see it there. Alright, this is going to be the best way to go out here on this video. We're going to go down the huge slide. Ready? Woo! My face is going into my ears! That was fun. <laughs> I want more of that, please. Where they go, everybody. That is unboxed. Definitely recommend checking out. I think it's worth the money because I've been having a ball with it. And uh, I will see you all next time on GGRC. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to check out some of the other GGRC episodes. And if you're feeling a little retro, why not jump into the Quake Grave where you can watch me play through a lot of different custom maps in Quake. Enjoy!